Trafficking Victims Protection Act of 2000 defines severe forms of trafficking in persons as the recruitment, harboring, transportation, provision, or obtaining of a person for the purpose of a commercial sex act, in which a commercial sex act is induced by force, fraud, or coercion, or in which the person forced to perform such an act is under the age of 18 years of age. Today, we're primarily talking about sex trafficking. There's also labor trafficking, which we're going to get into uh, in the next 12 months with our organization. Uh, and here's why. We just learned that as far as labor trafficking of kids and children, there's 212 million worldwide. Uh, the sex trafficking figure is 32 to 40 million worldwide. So we have like a five, six time problem with labor trafficking of, of kids across the world. And that's just now also coming to light and we're going to be doing some really good education on that issue and how America is affecting that as well. Here's some statistics. Now I want you to really get these. Traffickers uh, in the big time have no conscience. It's all about the money. Over 50% of victims are from the runaway population. Um, two thirds of runaways return home within 48 hours. The other one third are generally abducted by traffickers and are prostituted within 48 hours. So uh, I think this has been like three or four generations of abuse that is culminating in this thing called human sex trafficking across our country. And there's the reason I include perpetrators is because the perpetrators are not brand new at this. This begins wounding this on down through the years to where it's culminating in this. And a lot of our perpetrators have also been abused as kids. And that's what we have to understand if we're going to make a dent in this issue. Right now we're just learning about it. It's grassroots, ground roots. And we're just saying, oh my gosh, this is happening. But finally, we have to address all the issues connected. And that is one of them. Victims are used as high as 30 to 40 times a day, with the average being about 10 times. So if you have a victim, say, two, 300,000, and they're used 10 times a day, that's at the top of the game right here, 3 million, if only 300,000 are trafficked every year. 3 million men are buying illegal sex of children and women across this country today. 40% of missing children, this is a Florida report from the Florida Coalition Against Human Trafficking. 40% of missing children are probably alive in the hands of traffickers, that's what they've just um, collected. Even that about 95% of prostituted people are not out there on their own, they're being forced to do it. Even the girls in Las Vegas, when you go and talk to them and, and you look at their testimonies, they entered it at a young age, about 20 years ago. But again, we didn't look at it that way 20 years ago and they began to tell the truth as well. And uh, most of us are girls in here. How many of us go up saying, I want to be a prostitute? Anybody? Adult bookstores, modeling studios, bars, <clears throat> period, prostitute girls, some may still live at home like I like to do. Statistics. I gave you a lot, but here's a few more. Um, 800,000 per year, this is a, an old statistic, approximately 600,000 to 800,000 victims annually are trafficked across international borders, not necessarily into America, but across borders worldwide, including women, men, and children. Uh, victims are generally trafficked into the United States from Asia, Central and South America, and Eastern Europe. Russia is a, a big country for bringing prostituted people into America. I'm breaking it down now, it's actually about two per minute. It's the newest statistic I've heard as far as trafficking building, uh, victims. Again, $32 billion a year. Alabama, which is Birmingham area, this was done by a focus group down there, and they discovered that about 83% of the trafficked victims in Birmingham were from their own families. The poverty level of some of our cities is um, causing some of this to happen. Uh, and that's another issue, again, we have to address about uh, what's going on in America as regarding finances and the poverty level of a lot of our people. Let's go to Tennessee and Davidson County. This is the one that shocked Tennessee. Um, the TBI was presented a, a challenge from the General Assembly uh, last year to do a report on Tennessee, and we're the first state that's ever done that. Um, so TBI did a report and they sent out a survey to law enforcement, to social workers. Some of you may have gotten that. Did anybody get that report from TBI or that survey? Um, anyway, uh, judges, a lot of different people, primary care givers were given the survey. And in that survey, they discovered in the last, as actually 24 months, I apologize, that's incorrect, is 4,000 cases in the last 24 months uh, statewide were discovered in Tennessee. These were not arrests. These are cases that people knew about. 
that through, again, for social services, they, they discovered through talking with the kids and uh, mentoring the kids and whatever means they, they had. Four counties reported over 100 cases in the last 12 months, and that was Shelby County, Davidson County, Coffey, and Knox County. So in Davidson County right here, we had over 109 cases last year. Coffey County, because of the drug, the drug culture down there, Coffey County is known for methamphetamines and production of, of drugs, and that's drawing the traffickers. Where you have drugs, you have traffickers. Yeah, and the reason is, you know, drugs are sold once. Bodies are sold repeatedly, and that's why human trafficking is becoming so, so rampant now because of that fact. And so the house was the typical stuff in the yard, you know, you can imagine it. He said he walked in and the little girl met him, um, and he said, she said, no man in my bedroom on my birthday, and she stopped him from going into the home. And he said, what? And she said, no man in my bedroom on my birthday, and he didn't get it because he had not heard of this. And the lady from New York said, Van, did you hear what she said? And he said, yeah, she's precocious. She's just a little precocious little girl. And she said, no, listen, tell me what she said. And he repeated the words to her, and he still didn't get it until finally it clicked. This little girl had been trafficked. They called law enforcement, and she had been trafficked for, I think, about two years from different states and found in this area in Hendersonville, Tennessee. Um, the reason she was trafficked was the mom was a drug addict and the mom gave her to someone that she thought was trustworthy because she didn't want to deal with the little girl at seven years old. And so she had been trafficked um, for two years at that age in Tennessee. We need to take some responsibility in this and we need to change that. Commercials, the same thing. Pornography, all these issues, um, we need to somehow address them and I don't know how, so I'm, I welcome your input. Legislation is changing. Legislation, uh, especially in Tennessee, we passed three laws this past year where the prostitute is not the criminal. Now the Johns are the criminal. It's gone from a misdemeanor crime to a class B felony if you're caught. And reported about 80% of what kids learn, they learn from television. Um, think back when we were kids. What did we see? What affected us? And as you know today, if you watch much television, that Every movie out there has a sexual un uh, undertone, violence, and language. The three components that Hollywood uses in films to sell films. In 1953, pornography through Playboy, some of us in here remember that. I was born in 53. I don't remember that moment, but I know about Playboy. But that's when the commercialization of women for the first time occurred in this country, and it's grown progressively. And the thing that I find interesting about that is that in 53, it was after the war, uh, several years after the war, but the country was trying to overcome poverty, much like we're doing right now. And because of that, Hugh Hefner met with some leaders in the country and came up with a solution to the poverty that was men will pay to look at pretty women. And the first magazine, and women will pay to look at men, is not one-sided, but back then that was what they used. Um, so they came up with Playboy. From what I understand, the first magazine didn't even show skin. It just showed pretty women. But we were commercialized for the first time. And it's grown progressively since then. So you have to go back to some of these roots and we have to do something. Yes, our First Amendment is valuable, but there's a limit. I have to say that. There is a limit where we can't protect people from things like this. So that's something that we're going to try and begin to address. Since we made our film, we met a lot of people in Hollywood and learned how they think. And they think, excuse me, they think a lot like traffickers, it's all about the money. We're just a whole society and we don't know how to love each other anymore. We just don't. And, and, and the statistic that, that gets me is the church and the condition of the church. Because if the church is in such bondage like that, where's our hope? You know, when they're the ones that are supposed to be helping us all overcome this stuff. And now we're created in the image and likeness of God. And I think that's going to help us overcome a lot of this if we can help people understand their worth. What are you really worth? Forget the dollar. What are you worth? I heard some conversation this morning about um, the us-them mentality. And we need to get rid of the us-them mentality. We are all connected. And if we can understand that, that when I see a wounded person, that's a wounded part of me. And I need to address that. Um, I'm going to go back to my initial statement when I learned about this. It's like God opened my heart and he poured himself in me through these victims and these perpetrators. And I got that. I got it. It's like we're all one. There's some phone numbers that you can write down. I wish you would. This one is valuable. 
If you know anybody at all that you suspect might be uh, either a trafficker or a traffic victim or a potential or something that's going on, or you need to tell them and they'll guide you through what's necessary to get them the information they need to go in and, and help the situation. Here's another one. This one's only 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, but it's the uh, Department of Justice here in America. Again, a toll-free number, 888-428-7581. You can leave a message and they will call back the next day. And the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation just got this legislative um, phone number um, to help us in Tennessee. Thanks again. God bless you.